So this video is all about exact trig values and these come up quite often in the non-calculator paper of the GCSE exam. And it, well, people have different methods for these. Some people are really, really good at just remembering stuff like this. Some people, they got a sort of thing where they draw around their hand. If, if you like those methods, then brilliant, you are fine. I find it really difficult to remember stuff like this. So in this video, I try to show you where we derive those exact trig values from so you, you understand it. And for me, that, that's really the only way I can remember stuff is if I understand it. So I go through finding exact trig values for zero degrees, 30 degrees, 60 and, oh, sorry, 45, 60 and 90 uh, for sine, cosine and tangent. So the first thing to do with these exact trig value questions is to sort of use our knowledge of Sokotoa to understand how we can find the sine of an angle when we've been given the lengths. So this angle X has been indicated on the triangle. So with regards to X, this length is the opposite, the three centimeter one. This length is the adjacent and the five centimeter is the hypotenuse. And Sokotoa helps us to remember that the sine of our angle is equal to the opposite length over the hypotenuse. Okay, so the sine of that angle is three over five. All right, so sine x is three over five, three fifths. And what's the value of tan x? Well, we've already labeled our triangle and we just need to remember that the toa part of Sokotoa helps us to remember that the tan of your angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, the opposite in this example is three and the adjacent is four. So the tan of that particular angle is three over four, three quarters. So we assume we've got a triangle that has two 45 degree angles. That makes this triangle an isosceles triangle. That means that this length and this length are both going to be equal to each other. So let's assume, let's say that they both have a length of one, one unit could be meters, kilometers, anything. We'll just say one unit. We are going to use that knowledge, the fact that both of those lengths are one, to find out the length of this one. And to do that, we're going to use a bit of Pythagoras' theorem. So Pythagoras' theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where a and b are your two shorter lengths. OK, well, the two shorter lengths are both one. So we've got one squared add one squared is equal to c squared. One squared is just one, so one add one is two. So c squared is equal to two. So c is just gonna be the square root of that. So c is equal to root two. So this length here is just equal to root two. All right, so that's the first thing established. Second thing is we're gonna be using a bit of Sokotoa. So let's just make a note of that Sokotoa Sokoto just helps us to remember the relationship between the different lengths. So the SOH, that we can use that to remind ourselves that the sine of your particular angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And the cosine of your angle, cos theta, is equal to the adjacent over your hypotenuse. And the tan of your angle, okay, I'm just using that theta symbol, it just means, you know, any angle, the sine of your angle sorry, the tan of your angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, okay? Now, if we think about this triangle, let's focus on this particular angle here, this 45 degree angle. Oh, I could just as easy focus on the other one, but we'll, we'll choose one and we'll stick with it. So with relation to that angle, this side here is the opposite. This side is the hypotenuse, the longest side, and this side is the adjacent, okay? So the sine of 45, well, it tells us up here that it's equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, the opposite is one, and the hypotenuse is root two. So sine 45 is one over root two. That is it. Cos 45 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, where the adjacent is one, and the hypotenuse is root two. So cos 45 is also one over root two. Tan 45, well, tan is opposite over adjacent. The opposite is 1. The adjacent is 1, so it's 1 over 1. In other words, 1. So that is the exact trig values for 45 degrees for sine, cosine, 
and tangent. That's how you work them out. I think pretty straightforward. So I'm going to show you how to do this and to do it all you need is a bit of understanding of Pythagoras and you need to be able to remember this triangle that we use to establish the exact trig values for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. So first thing we're going to do, we know that it's an equilateral triangle we know all these angles will be 60 degrees. So that's the first thing, let's make a note of that. In fact, you know, I'm only going to write that one on from the moment, you will see why in a second. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this triangle in two right down the middle there so that we end up with two triangles They've both got a 90 degree angle here. Now, because this base has a length of two, if we split it in half, we know that this half just has a length of one. And from now on, we're just going to focus on that right-hand triangle. In fact, I'll, I'll get rid of that one on the left-hand side. So we've got a right angle triangle, we've got a 60 degree angle there, and we've got that 90 degree angle. So this angle must be 30 degrees so that they all add up to 90 degrees. So that's the first thing. Then we can use a bit of Pythagoras' theorem to help us work out that third length, the, the vertical length. So Pythagoras' theorem tells us that a squared at b squared is equal to c squared, and a and b are referring to the two shorter lengths. So we've got one squared at, let's call that the one we're trying to find, let's call that b. So b squared is equal to c squared. c is two. So 2 squared. Okay, so 1 squared is 1. 1 add b squared. 2 squared is 4, isn't it? Is equal to 4. If we subtract 1 from both sides, it tells us that b squared is equal to 3. And if b squared is equal to 3, b must be equal to the square root of 3. So that's the first thing. This length here is root 3. Right. So Sokotoa, so the sine of your angle which is right, theta, the sine of any angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of your angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tan of your angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So that's relevant to what we're about to do. Let's first of all focus on this 60 degree angle, okay? If we're looking at that angle, then this length here is the adjacent, this length is opposite the angle, and this is the hypotenuse. So let's now substitute those values into each of these ratios. So sine theta, or rather sine 60, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite is root 3. The hypotenuse is 2. Okay, let's do the same for cosine. Cos 60. So cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent is 1. The hypotenuse is 2. So cos 60 is a half. Last one, tan 60. Tan is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is root 3. The adjacent is 1. So that is it. Those are the exact trig values for sine 60, cos 60, and tan 60. So let's now focus on the 30 degree angle and we'll relabel our triangle accordingly. So if we're focusing here, then the opposite becomes this length. Hypotenuse doesn't change, does it? That's still that one. And the root three, that becomes the adjacent. All right, then we just repeat the process. So sine 30 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite is one. The hypotenuse is 2, so sine 30 is equal to 1 over 2, it's equal to half. Cos 30 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, in other words, root 3 over 2. And then tan 30 is the opposite over the adjacent, in other words, 1 over root 3. So those are the exact trig values for sine 60, cos 60, tan 60, sine 30, cos 30, and tan 30. Okay, so we need to know how to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of 90 degree angles and zero degree angles, and we're gonna use exact trig values to describe those. We're not gonna use a calculator, so we're gonna do this all without a calculator, and hopefully I'll explain it so that you can understand how to do it, so hopefully you will then remember it nice and easily. 
Okay, the way we're going to do this, I need to remind you a little bit of sort of soccer tower stuff. So imagine you've got a right angled triangle like this. Let's say well, we've got a, what, a 35 degree angle, let's say. Now the hypotenuse of this particular triangle has a length of 1. Let's label our triangle. So with regards to the 35 degree angle, this is the adjacent. This is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse. So Sokotoa. So Sokotoa tells us we've got this. If we want to find the opposite, that is all to do with the opposite and the hypotenuse. It's telling us that if you do the sine 35, if you multiply that by the hypotenuse, that will tell you what that height there is, okay? And the hypotenuse is just one, so sine 35 times one, which is, is just sine 35. Uh, we can also, so we can describe that length as sine 35. The cosine of 35 is gonna tell us what the adjacent is, but we also need to multiply that by the hypotenuse. Uh, but in this case, again, we know the hypotenuse is just one, so that will just be cosine of 35. Now imagine that angle reduces, so in fact it's going to reduce all the way down to zero, okay? Well the sine of the angle, in other words, sine of zero, I mean we haven't really got a triangle anymore, have we? We've just got that flat line. But nonetheless, the sine of zero is going to tell us the height of the triangle. Well, the height of the triangle is, there, there is no height to it, it's just that flat line. So we could say that the sine of zero is zero. The cosine of the angle, cosine zero, is going to be that width. And we knew that the hypotenuse started out with a length of one. And that base line, now we can see actually that has the exact same length. So the cosine of zero is equal to one. The tan of an angle, tangent, tan of zero, well, it's always equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Well, the opposite is zero. And the adjacent is one. So the opposite over the adjacent is zero divided by one. Well, zero divided by one is just zero, isn't it? So tan zero is zero. Now, what about if we open up that angle again, and in fact, we're gonna open it up all the way until it's a 90 degree angle. So again, it's not really a triangle anymore, it's just that straight line. But regardless, the sine of the angle tells us the height as it's pointing straight up, and we know that that hypotenuse had a length of one, we know that that height must be one. And the cosine of 90 is gonna tell us the width, right? And it's just going straight up, so there is no width. The width is zero, okay? So cos 90 is zero. And then tan, tan 90, well tan is the opposite, which is one, divided by zero, one divided by zero. So if you try and do that on your calculator, it'll come back with math error, okay? Because it's saying, you can't divide something by zero. Um, so we will leave that as undefined, okay? So tan 90, we just leave like that. So that's exact trig values. I hope you found it useful. As I say, for me, it's much easier to remember stuff if I understand it. And a really good way of developing your understanding, and this is my top tip, is to not just sort of take my word for it, but put the video to one side, see if you can recreate the, the triangles that I drew to remind yourself how we derive those trig values. And even better than that, is to then try and explain it to somebody else. Really good ways of getting it into your memory um, for long term. Right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel or give it a like and why not have a look at some of the other videos while you're here as well. And I'll see you in another one.